Hey, what's happening, guys? You remember about a month ago, on April 9th, for example. Huh? Oh, that's two months ago. We did this video on the Calcroft Walton uh, voltage multiplier, which uses <clears throat> nothing but capacitors and diodes to bump up your voltage. In each stage of this, which you can see I'm drawing a stage of it right there, will basically double your voltage, kind of. You know, there's going to be some losses there here and there from resistance, heat being given off, stuff like that. But basically, each one of these sections will double your voltage. So when I did that video, I got a couple questions about why I didn't demonstrate it. Well, what you didn't know was at the time I was waiting on this board that I had drawn up to arrive. So this is a three-stage Cockroft Walton multiplier, which should basically triple your voltage. Here's another look at the board itself. And there's kind of a 3D view of what it's going to look like. You can see the ground plane on the back. We feed our AC in here. It goes to each one through each one of these sections. We have a 10 uh, meg resistor on the end to limit the current so we don't accidentally kill ourselves. And we get high voltage DC out. What's beautiful about this, at least I think so, we have to try it, is I think we can daisy chain these together. That's why I made it like this. So, you know, we have a three section multiplier here. Then we can have another one and we end up with a six section multiplier or a nine section multiplier and we can start getting some very significant voltages. Now this video is brought to you by PCBWay and PCBWay is a major sponsor of this channel. And I know a lot of you guys say, well, you know, I don't want to see commercials on the channel. Well, without commercials on the channel, you know, you might not see some of these builds and learn some of these circuits. It's people like PCBWay that sponsor small YouTubers like myself that allow us to do what we do at no cost to you. So a big thanks to PCBWay for their sponsorship of not only this video, but of the Learn Electronics channel. All right, so we got the boards back from PCBWay. And there you can see we have space for six diodes, six capacitors. We have our AC input, our high voltage DC output, and right here we have a spot for a 10 meg resistor, which we're just going to put on the end. We're going to string some of these together. So I'm going to build this. We're going to be using 1,000 volt silicon junction diodes. And we're going to use some 100, no, we're going to use 150 picofarad. Uh, one kilovolt ceramic capacitors. Put this all together. Pretty easy build. The only thing that we really have to worry about is arcing between components. And hopefully, I'm going to pot it with this liquid tape compound. And I am hoping that the liquid tape compound <laughs> will stop it from arcing. But the only way we're going to know for sure is to do it. So I'm not using any sort of bender, just bending these by hand. As long as you have the right size footprints, you know, they should just drop in there pretty easily. No problem. And... You know, basically for this, any high voltage silicone diode is going to work fine. And any uh, flavor of high voltage capacitors, you know, keep your capacitance low so that we're not dealing with a massive buildup of energy through these. Notice I didn't say voltage. Because remember, the way this circuit works, each section is basically just going to double 
the input section. So each section is only going to have, you know, 300 volts on it. So where did I get 300 volts? I can hear you right now. Well, the US 120 volt system, the RMS is what, about 160 volts, 170 volts, somewhere in there. So you double that and that is where you end up with the just about 300 volts per section. So we put uh, four of these together. That gives us a 12 section voltage multiplier. So 300 times 2 is 600. Add another 300 is 900. So that's 900 per section times four sections. We should end up with somewhere between 3,000 and say 3,600 volts or three to, you know, three and a half kilovolts. And if we do as a very rough estimate, um, millimeter per kilovolt arc, we should easily, easily get a uh, three millimeter or more arc. But, you know, there are losses for many things, including parasitic capacitance in the air. So maybe we don't get that much. Unfortunately, I don't have a high voltage probe yet. Need to get one. So that we can actually measure the voltage off of one of these. Now, as you can see, I'm putting this together, so I haven't tried it yet. But theory tells me because this is going to be working off of mains voltage, it's going to be at 60 hertz. So it should be noisy. Now, if you remember the um, Tesla coil video, Slayer Exciter video we did a week or so ago, we got a small arc out of that, and it was it was virtually silent. Although it was throwing off so much RF that it was affecting the camera. But it was virtually silent. And I have played around with touching the arc. There's no electrical shock pain because the frequency is too high. There was just a small burn. So when the frequency is that high, it doesn't affect your nerves. It'll just burn your skin. But this frequency is going to be pretty low. So this, this would hurt. This would be a uh, pants defecating shock, I'm, I'm pretty sure. We're not going to find out, by the way. But when we plug this in and fire it up, if you hear, you know, it cracking and snapping and it's mean and nasty, well, then you can bet your bippy that low frequency and uh, that's going to hurt. So what we need to do now is just make a little jumper here for our 10 mega ohm resistor. Because remember, like I said, that's only going on the last section. So we're going to jump it in between sections. There we go. Didn't quite get that little guy wired very well. All right, so that's good. Let's get her wired. I'm using uh, 22 gauge stranded silicone wire 
for this. And the current on this is going to be very low. So there shouldn't be a, a problem with this wire handling the current. Of course, again, the only way to know is to do it. All the theory in the world goes out the window when you plug something in because that's when reality comes and it says, what's up? And of course, a big thing to keep in mind oops, is I'm not using, you know, the highest quality components that you know I bought from DigiKey or Mouser. I'm using oh, should that fall out the hole again? Yep. I am using pure Chinesium. Only the finest. Now If you look here, you see we got a couple of careless whiskers there, which I'm going to bite off. But I'm also going to throw on some of this here rubberized goop to try and pot these. So that they can't arc because that's my biggest fear is that the uh, interconnect between the boards is going to arc so we'll see what happens right well all right here is our train of cockroft walton voltage multipliers this is the input side three stages next three stages three stages and the final three stages with our current limiting res 10 meg uh, resistor and our wires. Now I have potted the inputs and outputs, which is, I think is the most likely place for arcing. So I need to clean off the bench get this hooked up and we'll see how it works now this board is not going to be available from PCB way I'm not going to share it because um, if something were to happen to you I don't want to feel responsible so you've seen how the circuit works if you want to build it yourself build it yourself but I'm not going to make it easy for you all right bear with me we're handheld for a second while we show you the setup here we got the Variac where we're plugged into there's stage one stage two stage three stage four we got a little spot there about a centimeter yeah, about a centimeter and you get good and locked on here Now, I don't know what this is going to do to the camera. It might, you know, upset it like it did with the other high voltage stuff we had. So, if that, uh, if that spacing isn't enough or is too much, I may have to tweak her a little bit. But it should be all right. All right. I am going to switch on. The high voltage. Ready? Oh, we arced right through there. So, oh, stanky, stanky. Why are we arcing there? Why are we arcing there? Hmm. Very interesting. One moment, please, while I investigate. All right, I repotted it and I replaced those silicon wires 
with a couple of high voltage wires I had off an old transformer. What worked? I don't know. But there it has been repotted. And I notice I missed that pot there too. So I repotted that one as well. And we'll see what happens. Gonna give this some time to dry, then we'll be back. All right, we're back together. Everything is taped down in place. We got about a centimeter between our wires. Hopefully the potting is much drier this time. And we're gonna find out in just a second. Oh! Did it work? Try that again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. That's nasty. That's probably more than 3,000 volts. Now, you notice that buzzing, that cracking, that hissing? That's the low frequency. That is the 60 hertz coming in there. Yeah, that would hurt you. Whew. That's kind of scary. Well, as we take a look here, we can kind of pan out over the... I mean, everything looks fine. How about one more shot? Yeah. All right, this has every opportunity in the world to go badly, but here we go. <laughs> Woo! That's some high voltage. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me the old thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring this. Big thanks to you guys for watching it. Big thanks to the patrons for supporting this channel. And if you are not a patron, you're going to miss out tonight on our first inaugural Zoom call. There's still time. 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. Go to the patron. There's a link down below. Buck a month. That's all it takes. That's it. I'm out. Peace.